NBC Sports Radio, AM 1060, KDUS Tempe, Phoenix, and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale, Phoenix. You are listening to the Lanch J Radio Network. What you know about this East Coast music, Ray? (laughs) I see you nodding your head. Uh, I mean, I mean, I am not in my head. I don't know. I mean, I know that much, though. I mean, I know that much. When you're on a new affiliate in a new city, you got to you gotta make a good first impression. So I had to come in with that hardcore East Coast Timberland boot type stuff. Okay. You were listening to the Paragon of Sports Talk Excellence, the Lance Day Radio Network, and keep the music going under me. It is great to be with you on a Sunday evening, coming to you live from NBC Sports Radio Studios in sunny Phoenix, Arizona. I am your host, the one and only James Lewis III. It is great to be here. New affiliate, new time slot, and a lovely new co-host. She's going to get an opportunity to introduce herself real quickly. Shout out to everybody listening in on the free agent radio feed. Shout out to everybody who followed us over from WTEL 610 Sports in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Ray, let's go make this thing happen. Let's do it. Introduce yourself, uh, my new lovely co-host. Good evening. I'm Miss Ray Black, coming to you live with Lance J, my boy. That's all you got? That's all I got. All right, so we're getting off (laughs) on the wrong foot. That's okay. Uh, So tell us about, as uh, as our engineer cuts the music down a little bit, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us about... How you and I were able to make this thing happen. Oh, okay, that's what you want. That's what I want. Okay, gotcha. Um, We were able to make this happen, um, being longtime friends, number one. And um, Where did we go to school? We went to school at Oakwood University. That's right. OU. That's right. A lot of people, shout out to everybody, a lot of people from Oakwood listening. shout out to OU. A lot of people listening and texting me and tweeting me. We reconnected after um, the fight. We reconnected fight night. The Mayweather-McGregor fight. The Mayweather, yep. When you had a fight party, we reconnected. No doubt. And you had been doing this show already, and you asked me if I would co-host with you, give it a little I didn't actually ask you if you would co-host with me. I said, said, do you know anybody Uh that that I was going to say, yes, I will do that with you. Knowing that I was going to say, So you kind of called me on it. So you knew knew that I was (laughs) asking you to co-host the show. All right. All right. That's why I asked you to (laughs) co-host. So let's get into it. Um, Once again, it's just great to be on air live here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, Those who have not heard this show before, we've been on kind of in what I like to call quasi-syndication on the East Coast. Uh, This is our first West Coast affiliate. Um, Ray and I are going to have this East Coast, West Coast beef as kind of a reoccurring theme. So it should be a very interesting show. We talk sports. We talk hip-hop. We talk current events. Um, It's going to be a very funny and entertaining program. So I was looking today at at kind of some of the things that have been going on over the weekend in sports. I mean, you have uh, the Masters. So you have um, a new champion at the Masters, Patrick Reed, who I really hadn't heard of. I've only watched golf when Tiger's involved. Um, I thought that Tiger was going to win the Masters, and and he didn't. I know that you said that you really didn't get a chance to, to participate. Yeah, I really I wish that I had more time, but my life is life as a flight attendant is not it is not like life that. as a flight life attendant. as a flight How attendant. Does a, a flight attendant <laughs> converge or sports talk and hip hop. It's a very interesting <laughs> parallel. I'm sure you have some interesting stories about people um, who are famous that you may have waited on as a flight attendant. I've had a few. OK, I've had a few. Um, one in particular, I had Vince Vaughn. He was really Darn. funny. He Vince had Vaughn, dodgeball. He had the whole first class. Rolling. Just cracking up. Just literally. Just cracking roll, up. Including myself. Rolling. I wow. was trying to hold it together, keeping it wow. professional, but I was still rolling with everybody else. Can you get Vince Vaughn on the show? <laughs> I don't think so. All right. You got to use, you gotta use your, <laughs> your, your connects. Hey, hey, the, second, the second big event that's going on this evening is WrestleMania. Now, I haven't seen WrestleMania since I was 11. Right. And I'm curious, Ray, you know, we talk about... Um, you're a, you're a lovely lady. Um, you happen to be single, uh, bumping around the Metro Phoenix area, and you're literally running for, like, Miss Arizona. I know it's not Miss Arizona, but it's something in that 
is Space. Ms. Woman, Arizona, United States. But you're literally <laughs> running in a beauty pageant. I am, yeah. And you're a single woman. Yes. Would you date a guy? So, so if I'm somebody here in Phoenix, I'm trying to step to Ray Black. I'm trying to get my G together. <laughs> And, you and come and, correct. And I'm I'm trying to come correct, come with the flowers, you know. I'm I'm really putting in the <laughs> work. I like flowers. And then we're on date three, and I'm like, yo, do you want to watch WrestleMania? Is that a rap? Is that like no, completely I, over? No, it's not a rap. Oh, and, wow. I'm a, and I'm gonna watch WrestleMania too. Oh wow. I'm gonna watch WrestleMania. I wasn't expecting yeah, that. Yeah, I, I am going seen, to watch WrestleMania. I have no idea. I stopped watching wrestling around the time that Hulk Hogan was in uh Monday Nitro and he was in the NWO. Mm-hmm. And you had Hulk Hogan, and you had, uh, I can't even name some of the rest. You had I Kevin like Nash and all of those. Okay. I like Triple H. Wow. Um, I liked China. She was the female wrestler um, with the long black hair. You remember her? I do she, remember she China. Really Rest in peace. She was really pretty with the long black Rest hair. Rest in peace, yeah. definitely. Um, she was in Playboy. That's why I specifically yes. That's remember, remember China. The most. <laughs> um, so wow, I wasn't expecting that. So if you're trying to holler at the ladies, if, if you're single and, and want the beautiful beauty pageant ladies, <laughs> you know, whip out that WrestleMania uh, take her down to the to Talking Stick Casino, um, where the Suns play, and and the next time that the WWE is in town, you you might get somewhere. But I'm not going to talk about that at length. Um, I had a very interesting. So I get a lot of material for the show and my interactions with people online and on our Facebook page and on Instagram. Lamar Jackson, who is a prospect, is a quarterback prospect. He is. Um, all-world quarterback, was the Heisman winner two years ago from Louisville. He um, took a test called the Wonderlick recently, and his score on the test was very, very interesting. I always, and I don't want to start the first segment with controversy, but I'm always enamored and interested by the way that people portray African-American quarterbacks Mm -hmm. in society. I think that there are many, many times where it's clear that in middle America, there are different pockets of people around the country that are not comfortable with someone like Lamar Jackson uh, being an African-American leading their team into battle week in, week out. Now, most people that take the Wonderlick, the average score is is around the low to mid-20s. Okay. Um, So it's supposed to be an equivalent of an IQ test. So do we know his score? No, his. We're going to get into that. I'm um, okay. having a little bit of trouble, technical difficulties here. So Lamar Jackson takes the wonder look, and you know, like I said, a typical score is somewhere around twenty. Um, some quarterbacks that are really successful, people like to see someone with a higher score in the mid to upper thirties. If you're like forty or above, that's considered genius level. Oh, okay. So you don't gotcha. have to be a genius to to play football necessarily. Right. I mean, uh, for example. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick scored a perfect 50 on the Wonder League or 49 on the Wonder League. He threw six interceptions in one game. So being a genius doesn't mean that you're going to be a great quarterback. Exactly. However, Lamar Jackson scored a 13 on the Wonder League. Now, this is a multiple test choice. So you have A, B, C, D. Right. And he scored a 13. I'm very concerned and I know that the reason I bring him up is because I'm hearing a lot on the radio throughout the week that the Arizona Cardinals, who really, really need a quarterback, are looking at drafting this guy. Okay. I would not draft someone that scored a 13 on the Wonder League. But why is that? Because I wouldn't say that scoring poorly on the Wonder League is a precursor to how successful you're going to be. I would say that it means that you don't take tests well. Okay. I would say that it means that you don't process information well. And I want my franchise quarterback, the person that I'm going to tether myself to over the next 10, 12, 15 years to be a good test taker. Now, people that have kind of scored low on the Wonder League, Michael Vick scored in the 20s. Tim Tebow scored in the low 20s. There are a lot of people that have kind of struggled, some people that have done well, but you don't see anyone who's in the NFL that's been successful that is a 13. I just think that that's way too low of a score. So is this, this is like a standard standardized test. This standardized is, test. Okay. So I have, I have a 50-50 thought on the standardized, any type of standardized test. I have a 50-50 thought. Because I think a standardized test um, it definitely doesn't show 
your athletic ability. Like just because you score low on a standardized test, that doesn't mean that you can't. Yeah, but you have you know, to to be a quarterback. You have to read a defense. You can't you can't be a quarterback and not read the defense. But how does the test mean that you can't read the defense? If you're a 13 on the Wonder League, there's almost a question if if you can read. Period. Um, yeah. that's a extremely low. That's called an outlier of a score. I think that I want my quarterback to be someone who is really, really good at processing information. And uh-huh. we're kind of getting the music for the playoff. I have to get used to the different format being out at, at KDUS Studios. I just don't think that a score that low is the type of individual that, that you're going to need to, to get it done. Okay. All right. And I can understand why you would say that. Um, I don't necessarily agree but I can de- I can understand why someone would um, I understand why someone would think that I well, wh- still don't I still don't think that that determines your athletic ability. Everyone is different. Some people may score a fifty. Some people may score a twenty. But everyone is different. But whether you can play well, the sport or not, I mean, he's made it this far.